Hello, this is Robert Smith here to tell you about Inventor Pack and Go. Pack and Go makes it easy to quickly gather all components of an Inventor design together and make a copy of them. Here you see an example of a fairly complex assembly. It's made up of a top level assembly file, several sub assemblies, and lots of part files. They're scattered across multiple locations, including libraries, content center folders, and folders generated by frame generator and tube and pipe. If I want to send a copy of this assembly to someone, I can't just send them the assembly file. They will need all of the components related to it as well. Pack and Go makes this easy. I can launch Pack and Go right from Windows Explorer by right-clicking on the assembly file and choosing Pack and Go from the context menu, or I can launch it from Inventor. While I have the assembly open, I'll go find the command in the application menu. Once in the Pack and Go dialog, I'll specify a destination folder for the new files. Inventor has already selected the active project for me, and since the assembly opened correctly for me without any unresolved links, the current project will work fine. Otherwise, I'd have to specify a project file that would allow Inventor to find all the needed parts. There are several options here. My current file structure has parts scattered throughout multiple subfolders. I can keep that structure or have Pack and Go dump everything into a single root folder. I can elect to skip or include linked files which would include linked spreadsheets, image files, or text files. I can also skip styles and templates to reduce the size of the new data. There are a couple of options I want to point out. One is the Skip Libraries checkbox. It should be unchecked by default, but I always double check. If this is checked, none of my library or content center parts will be collected. This could result in missing hardware in the new data set. New to this dialog is the option to have the new data set automatically zipped up for me, which is convenient. I'll hit the Search Now button to generate a list of documents that this assembly references. I see the list at the bottom. This should include all the sub-assemblies and parts needed to open the new assembly on the other end. It'll also include things like inventor stress analysis data. Note that there is another section of this dialog that allows me to search for files that reference this assembly. In other words, if this assembly were part of a larger assembly, that would show up with this search. Once I've compiled the list, I'll hit the Start button, and I'm done. Pack and Go will generate a new copy of all the files, completely disconnected from the source files, so you're free to do whatever with them. The zipped folder can be emailed to another user, who will be able to open the assembly without any unresolved links.